You're listening to City of Muses on Paris Underground Radio. Welcome to the season two premiere of City of Muses on Paris Underground Radio. I'm your host, Jennifer Garrity. I'm a screenwriter, filmmaker, and the creator and founder of the Paris Underground Radio Podcast Network. Each week, I sit down with an artist or creative to talk about what inspires them, what their creative process is like, and how Paris plays into it all. This week, I had the pleasure of speaking with Melanie Furtado. Melanie is a Canadian sculptor and art educator who won this year's prestigious Medaille Bronze at the Salon des Artistes Français. She first grabbed my attention with her fantastic Women States of Being series, in which she showcases naked women of diverse ages, races, and body types in states of quiet contemplation. She creates her sculptures by adding pieces little by little, one at a time, leaving the textures of these pieces of clay and her fingerprints as part of the final piece of art. While the focus may start on the body, it's the depth of emotion she captures in the faces that really draws you in. Hello, Melanie. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me. It's an honor. <laughs> Can you start by telling our audience a little bit about who you are and what you do? Sure. So I am a sculptor, primarily, and I sculpt the human figure or like elements of the figure, like portraits or different elements. And I really am just so inspired by the human body specifically. And I think it's like the capacity for it to communicate through body language that I, I love the most, as well as with sculpture, you have this element of like material and the physicality of, you know, like kind of like an object that's existing in our dimension. And it has this ability to kind of impact us in our environment and our emotions, which is really exciting. So that's kind of why I make sculptures in, in a nutshell. How did you first discover sculpture? Well, I went to a local art college in the town that I'm from. So I'm from Canada, the West Coast of Canada. And I went to a college there and it was very kind of like traditional skills based college. So we had all kinds of classes of even, you know, like we had design, we even did animation, like hand drawing animation and stuff. And so sculpture was one of the classes that I took and it was actually a class uh, with the live model. So sculpting from the model. And I just loved it. I found it so like challenging, but also very invigorating and very interesting. And I just, it really captured my attention and I kind of pursued that as much as I could in the school. And then after that, I, I pursued it on my own independently to kind of take my skills up to a higher level. Did you always know that you wanted to be an artist of some sort? You know, it's kind of a funny question. I was thinking about that word recently, like artist. And I feel like some people have, have feelings about that word. And I, it's not that I ever really thought to myself, I'm going to be an artist. It was more like I was making art and I went to art school and I was like, well, I'm an artist, I guess. Like I never had a moment where I said I was or I wasn't. It was just sort of like, isn't that what a person who makes art is called? <laughs> so um, yeah, I guess I just sort of, I sort of pursued what I felt drawn to. When you first discovered sculpture, and maybe even now, is there a particular body part that tends to draw you in first? Oh, the face. Okay. For sure. I love faces. Uh, I think they're so fascinating. Like, they're just so unique and really, like, even on the metro, you know, when we're, we're in Paris, you have to take the metro a lot. If you just observe people's faces, you will never hate the metro again because it is just like a <laughs> plethora of inspiration of different varieties and people's different states of, of emotion and stuff like that. So I definitely, definitely love the face on the portrait in particular. Yeah. I'm going to hold on to that nugget the next time I'm in rush hour <laughs> on line 13. Exactly. You'll be like, I'm so close to their face. I can see it perfectly. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. This is so inspiring. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Fabulous. Did you ever play around with other mediums? Like once you discovered sculpture, was that it for you? Um, yeah, I played around with lots of things. Like when I was young, you know, I played with all kinds of things with varying levels of success. I remember a, a stint where I tried sewing and, um, that was a nightmare because I just couldn't cut out the pattern. I have, I have very little patience. And in school, I also loved printmaking. That was the other thing that I really loved. And so it was like, okay, well, you can't 
really do sculpt. I mean, you guess you could do sculpting and printmaking, but they're both pretty involved processes. So I went the sculpture route just because I love, I just, yeah, I love that physicality of being able to like manipulate and move the clay in, in space. It's like really satisfying. So you seem to have developed your own style of sculpture. It's not like these big marble ones that we might think of. Can you describe your style and kind of how your sculptures are made? Yeah. Okay. That's interesting because I guess I'm using kind of what people would call traditional processes, right? Like this is the same kind of stuff that comes from ancient Greece or like the academies of Paris, you know, the 19th century. It's all kind of coming from there. But I think you can take that and you can use those to make them your own. So for me, when I think of my style, it's always hard to describe your own style, but I've become more and more interested in like how I apply the clay and, and like trying to have the surface of the sculpture represent the process that I went through in creating it. Like I'm quite process oriented and I, and I find that that sculpture creates a very interesting experience for me as a creator because I'm able to be like, if, if I paint you a picture of the process with working with the model, then, then you'll be able to go in, in the, in the process with me. So like, because I work with individuals who come and pose in the studio, you know, I'm basically there. I have the person who is posing as the model. I have my clay that's going to become the sculpture. And then I have me. And it creates this kind of like container almost where I'm able to be really observational and really responsive to a person who is still in a way that you would never experience in daily life. You know, like that's not an experience that you get to have of observing someone for that long. Um, and I think it's, it's like a privilege. It's like a really interesting interaction. So I'm able to observe them, you know, with my eyes and also with like, my feelings or whatever I'm getting from them intuitively. And then you're able to put that into clay. Like you're able to take, okay, this is what I see and feel. And now I'm going to, I'm going to smush that into the clay. <laughs> and I love that, that when I add, like I'm very additive when I build, so I sort of build it up piece by piece. I really like the idea that some of those observations that I made and then I placed there on the sculpture could sort of just be there on the surface as kind of like evidence of that time that I spent making it because that, that's what's anyway in the end that's what the sculpture is to me is a representation of that time that I spent less than it is like a final polished perfect representation of something that I had in my head it's more like here's here's what happened during that time I spent did that make sense yes. did you get the picture okay yes absolutely no I love that I love that it's very interesting I want to talk I have lots and lots of questions about what you just said <laughs> Uh, but I want to talk about your Women States of Being series because I'm really in awe of it. It's so beautiful. Can you talk a little bit about how that came to be? Yeah, well, thanks. I'm glad that you connect to them. How that came to be was actually it started when I first came to Paris. I didn't know anyone, obviously, and I didn't know any models or anything. And I started this first series that I made, which I called the Impressions series, which was smaller sculptures that were one-off pieces of one-off. I mean, the model posed for me for one session. And it was people I'd never met before. And I sort of created this whole series. And I thought, wow, I really love series. I thought I want to take this and I want to develop it. I want to develop the idea in a different direction. So I chose to work with just women. I think part of it because coming from the tradition, like I mentioned, it, it's a tradition with a very long lineage. And within that, there has been a lot of, you know, representations of the female nude that I don't necessarily feel connect to my values. And so I wanted to say, okay, I want to represent women the way that I think that I want, to, I want them to be seen. And so I thought I would take on the idea of the women and having all different ages and different body types. And then taking that idea of the emotional state. So like trying to look at how can I communicate you know, these more like internal, subtle states of being that we might find ourselves in, maybe a more reflective state. And, and how can I kind of communicate that through the sculpture of these different women? Because really, these are the idea for me is that the, the sculptures are individuals. They're very specifically that person. And the reason that I like that is because I feel that sometimes when you see someone 
um, like a, a piece of artwork or a sculpture, and it's so specifically someone, but you connect to them and what they're feeling, it creates the sensation of like connection of universality through that individuality versus like if I have a really generic figure that doesn't look like anyone, it could be anyone. It's, and you connect it. It's just a different approach. So I like to go like, let's see how we're all connected through this one person. And if you can connect to that one person, you can see how you're the same as that person, really, even though you're different. Do, do you know where I'm going with that? Yeah, I love that. So the women that you were sculpting in the series, are they people that you knew or people that you approached or did they come to you? Yeah. So by this time I had kind of, um, gotten a little bit better of a sense of things in Paris. And so I was working, most of them are art models that I had met through different sessions, different drawing sessions. I was hosting a life drawing for a while and I met different models through there. And so I would ask them to pose. And then, you know, we would come up with the pose that they're in together. So I was never like I had a predetermined pose. It was like something that came out of working together we came up with what the sculpture would be. But I just, there was something about that person that I felt drawn to that I wanted to include in, in, in the series. And so they come into your space and then you just sort of walk around or they get comfortable until they find a position that works for both of you? Yeah, so it's kind of interesting. The way that I've been working it is that I do drawings. So I, I love drawing. I love sketching. So fun. So I kind of have them come and usually we'll do like just a bunch of like really rapid, like two minute poses so that they can do like a million of them and there's no pressure and I can do a bunch of drawings. And sometimes uh, the pose will come out of that. And yeah, it's kind of like a, a, a process of trying to find something that feels natural and not like forced. When we think about, like, historically, you mentioned this already, the history of, of sculpture, you could think of these, like, classic Greek gods or these Roman statues, and these statues are meant to represent some sort of quote-unquote ideal. Do you ever find when you are meeting with your models that you have to sort of bridge that gap between what's perfect, like the expected perfect, and them being perfect as they are? You mean bridge it in sense of like the way that they feel or the way that I feel? No, the way that they feel. Do you ever feel like they have some sort of mental hurdle that they need to overcome that you need to help them with? Interesting. Not so much because a lot of them are actual art models, so they're used to that. So it's more like they have a set of, they, they do have a thing where they feel like they need to pose a certain way. And I'm like, no, no, <laughs> we don't need to try and be beautiful. It's, it's okay. We're just going to be. But I did find that, you know, working um, previously with people who had never posed before, that it, it actually can be kind of a really interesting experience for someone because they're expecting to be seen and judged. And I'm not judging them, right? Like I'm observing them. So I'm looking at them like probably more than they've been looked at before in one specific sitting. But it's a very like when you're looking at someone artistically like that, it's it's a, I don't even know what the word for is it. But you know, there's kind of like an agape love there. You're like, I'm just looking at what you are and I'm recording it and I don't have it. I'm not passing judgment on that. And so I've gotten feedback from people who said that, you know, that was a really interesting experience to receive that and to say, oh, wow. Okay. Like I, I, yeah, that, that did something for them. Do you have music on? <laughs> yes, I do. I like to play. Sorry. I laugh because I just thought of like, you, the strange music you could have. I don't know why, but <laughs> <laughs> like Metallica or something. No, no. I just play some chill, like some electronic music in the background. I don't like to have words when I'm sculpting because sometimes they distract me. So usually just some like some music. And how well do you know these women? Because the the sculptures seem very intimate. It seems like through looking at them, like you, like I know them profoundly. So how much do you know of them actually of their own life stories? Um, I usually don't know that much, uh, but they tend to tell me, you know, like when, when we're working together, I learn about them as people, which I enjoy. I, I enjoy hearing about, you know, their history, where they come from, why are they posing as an art model? It's always something interesting because, you know, it's an interesting life choice. Um, so there's always a reason. And I think that that, you know, you sort of put that into the work as well like what you get from from learning about that person's life sort of that goes into what you what you make
Curious about what's going on in Paris right now? My second podcast, Don't Miss This, takes you beyond the typical and the obvious with a weekly roundup of the best of what's happening in Paris each week. Never wonder what you're missing out on again. Listen now to Don't Miss This on parisundergroundradio.com or wherever you listen to podcasts. We'll be right back with City of Muses after a word from our sponsors. And now, back to City of Muses on Paris Underground Radio. When you're making, so you said that there's the model and then there's the sculpture and then there's you. Are the models watching you sculpt them? I mean, sometimes they look at it, yeah. For sure. Yeah. So you're kind of, I'm kind of being observed also. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Does that ever come into play in how the sculpture gets made? No, because it's not a commission, right? So that's the difference is, is that I'm making it and what they think of it, I would like them to enjoy it. Sure. I'm only (laughs) human, but like, but on another level, like, it doesn't really matter because it, it, I mean, it does matter, but it doesn't, you know, like, I'm not making it to please them. So it's a piece outside of themselves. It's not a representation of them directly. Exactly. I notice that your sculptures all seem to be, I don't know if you use the same metric standard, but they all seem to be, and I can't do any conversions. They seem to be about like one to two feet tall. Yeah, that series, they're all the same scale. Okay. So that they would be, because you can basically see them all together and they kind of make sense as a, as a collective experience of each of the individuals. So I did make sure, I do work with measurements as well. I could take some measurements of the model and in that way I can have them be consistent in scale to each other. Do you ever work with larger scale? Have you ever done like a life-size sculpture? I'm doing a big one now. It's not life-size, it's 75%. But I'm working, that's what I'm working on right now, my new project. And I am super pumped about it. It's really fun working on the larger scale because you're able to take up like more space. And basically, you know, you can't escape the fact that something larger demands more attention of the viewer. So it's, it's harder to dismiss. Uh, so I feel like whatever you're going to say, you're going to amplify that, that message. There's something cool about working small as well, though, because it is more intimate in a way. Like you have to get close to something and, and it's small and, and, and yet, it, it, they're just different, you know, but I'm, I'm enjoying this largeness that I'm now playing with. Are you using the same technique where you put on like little bits of clay piece by piece to build this larger sculpture? Yeah, the pieces are just bigger. Okay. <laughs> just smash them on there. Actually, it's kind of funny because I was creating and I was like, whoa, this is like, this takes a lot of energy because I can like <laughs> move around all the time. And I was like, wow, whew, bigger. It's like, it's a workout. It's good. <laughs> So we've talked a lot about the bodies and the shapes of these women, but I I need to just say that what draws me in, what I felt so attracted to, is the faces. There's such subtlety, such vulnerability, and I feel like I really know who these women are just through little, I don't know, they don't even necessarily have like eyeballs, but I can really sense their who they are. I don't know that there's a question in there, but I really thought that you, you just need to know how beautiful I find these spaces. Well, thank you. I really uh, appreciate that. I, I'm really glad that, that that comes through. It feels like you love them. I do. I mean, I think you, for me anyway, like I can't create something like you have to love what you're making and you, in the sense that you have to be so invested in it, like you have to love the shape that you're making. Otherwise, you won't give what it takes to make that shape. Do you know what I mean? So like, yeah, I mean, it's, it's happened to me like I've, I've made sculptures of like a portrait of, of someone. And, and then after I've made the portrait, I feel this like someone I've never met, for example, it was in the past, like from a photo uh, as a commission or something, which I don't do very often. But and afterwards, you have this like sort of connection to this this person through the study of their physicality. And it's really interesting. You said something really interesting in a video that I watched of yours, which is that someone's body, and I suppose their face too, who we are physically, is a retelling sort of of the history of everything that we've been through. So I suppose when you're observing someone that closely, you are actually learning their life story in a sense. Yeah, absolutely. I I think it's, that's another reason I think the body is so interesting, you know, because like the body is so physical and it doesn't really lie 
And it does, it takes like all the shapes on your face or your hands or everything, you know, you're born with a certain body, but the way that that changes and, and the way that it presents in the world is indicative of everything that you've gone through in your life. And so I think that that's really beautiful. And that's one of the reasons that, you know, like I like all, I like sculpting all different kinds of bodies and, and even the aging body that typically people are like thinking that's not beautiful or something ridiculous. It's like, what are you talking about? That is the body that has gone through life. And all of those marks are like, that is important. How can you want to erase that? I don't know. Anyways, that I just feel like, yeah, it's a really beautiful way to honor the the impact that life has had on your body and to honor your own body for that. I think it's, I think it's beautiful. I agree with you. How do you know when a piece is done? When I when I'm out of time. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, but I, it's a really interesting question. I did create sort of like a format for myself that I, I kept with my previous series where I had a certain amount of sessions I would do with the model. Because I think it's important to create a container as well. You know, like you create a container for something and you're going to, you're going to create what you create in that container. But it is always a question. Like sometimes you, you do something and you're like, Oh, I liked it more before. Or oh, maybe I should have kept going. And in the end, like everyone's going to have their own answer. But is there anything really ever finished? No, I think you, you're like, there's my idea. Is my idea communicated? Is the piece communicating something? Yes or no. If it's a yes, well, like what more do you need to do to it? Mm, yeah. You won an award earlier this year that was kind of prestigious. Can you brag about yourself for a moment? I'm really bad at doing that. <laughs> um, yes, I won an award at the Salon des Artistes Francais. Uh, so I got the bronze medal there, which was very generous of them and very exciting. It's, it's incredible. And my understanding, too, is that that's not normally given out to first-time exhibitors. So, you know. Yes, exactly. Normally you can't because it, it's an interesting system. It's not like the Olympics where like anyone can win the gold. It's kind of like you every year you, you have to start at the bottom, win the first award, and then you slowly work your way up to their top award or something. So I kind of skipped a run and got the, got the bronze. That's nice. Good for you. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been living in Paris? It's coming on six years now. Um, in the beginning, though, I did a little bit more back and forth, like going back to Canada. Uh, but now definitely, you know, Paris is definitely my home now. How do you feel that Paris helps or hinders you as an artist? I think the same thing that helps is what hinders. And it's the incredible plethora of inspiration that you can partake in. And so it's like you never have a reason to to not be inspired because like just the sheer amount of beauty the museum shows the exhibitions dance like there's anything that you would want that you want to experience you can and so that's also the problem where it's like if you're just out <laughs> taking in all of these amazing things all the time how do you have space to create your own thing so you I think that maybe in the beginning when I first came here I was I was like some sort of crazy sponge and I had to go to every single exhibition because I just oh my god look at the, how could I possibly miss this <laughs> and I saw like everything like literally just everything I just saw it all and now I'm a little bit more I've calmed down a little bit and so I kind of you know balance it with a lot more uh, space to process I was exactly the same when I first got here I was like there's just everything I need to go to everything I need to see it right. all I know yeah, but even just walking around outside you're like oh my god this is so beautiful I can't believe I'm here I know yeah, it's it's exactly like that. And when we first lived here, it was in the we were in the sixth near the Seine. And it's like you're living in a postcard. You just walk around and you're like, "Am I dreaming or am I in a postcard?" And so bizarrely, like it was so beautiful that sometimes it was hard to work. And it's kind of a strange fact, but when it's so nice, you don't you don't need to make anything. But I, yeah, but I see what you're saying. I mean, that's also a really nice thing to not have the pressure and you can just enjoy the time and space that you're in. But yeah, there's a balance, I suppose, that needs to be found. Yeah, absolutely. I think that the, it was very, very informative, very educational. I learned so much. I feel like my taste and appreciation grew by like leaps and bounds. And like, really, I appreciate that opportunity to take in all of that artwork 
so much. Like there's no better education than experiencing and seeing an amazing variety of really high quality exhibitions and like the museums that we have in Paris are incredible. So yeah, I, I, I'm forever grateful for that. Have you exhibited your work back in Canada as well? Um, not since I moved away. No. I understand that you do sculpting workshops as well. Is that right? Yeah, I was doing quite a few like pre pandemic, I would bring people to Europe. So I've done Italy and uh, Paris and the south of France. So I am going to start them again. And I think I have something on the works next year for Italy. And I'd like to start again also doing some workshops in Paris, like I said, because it's those two places for me have been so impactful um, as a sculptor, just being able to see the artwork from specifically, you know, France and Italy have been some of the highlights for me. So I love sharing that with other people. Do you find that teaching has changed the way that you sculpt? I started teaching very, very early. So I kind of was teaching and I was still sort of like studying myself because really, I mean, you're always studying, like I'm still studying now, do you know? But I feel like because I started teaching kind of right away, it it did maybe help me in a certain way to be more descript not descriptive, but to have a process. I had to processize it because you have to explain it to someone else. And so something that the best way to test if you know something <laughs> is to try and explain it simply to someone else. And so I guess that helped me to refine my process quickly. That makes a lot of sense. You said that you're working on this larger scale sculpture at the moment. Can you give us any hints as to what you're working on? Well, this is a larger piece and I'm also going to be working more in bronze. So in the past, I have been working a lot in a um, very cool material called jesmonite, which is kind of like a eco-friendly acrylic gypsum resin. And I've decided I want to work in bronze more to be able to create works that, you know, are more permanent and could also potentially go outside. And so it's, it's just the first start of this. So I'm not, you know, I don't have the particulars of exactly where I'm going, but I feel really excited about going in this direction and seeing where it leads. How cool. Yeah. I think it would be really interesting to see your piece communicate with the outside world. Yeah. Yeah. That would be rad. <laughs> so where can people find you if they want to keep up to date with what you're doing and what's going on in your world? Yeah, um, well, they can find me on, well, Instagram a little bit, which is my handle is at melanie.furtado. Uh, but the best way is to sign up. I have like a studio email list I send out maybe once a month, some updates on what I'm working on and exhibition invites. So if you want to do that, you can go to my website, which is melaniefurtado.com. And then there should be studio list somewhere there because I've got some some exhibitions coming up. Hopefully I got one next month. So if you want to get the invites, got to get on the list. Fabulous. So I will include links to all of that so that people can find you. And when your next exhibit comes to fruition, let me know. And I'll include a link to that as well so people can find you and it quite easily. That's fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Melanie. Thank you so much for speaking with me today. It has been a real pleasure. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you for listening to City of Muses. If you've liked what you heard, please take a moment to rate and review it. This is the fastest and easiest way to help support the podcast. Tell a friend who could use a little inspiration. You can also subscribe to the Paris Underground Radio newsletter over on our website, parisundergroundradio.com, which comes out every Sunday and gives a little peek into what's on the network for the week ahead. I'm your host, Jennifer Garrity. You can find me on all socials at Jenny Foria. That's J-E-N-N-Y. P-H-O-R-I-A. Thank you for listening, and may you find inspiration wherever you go. City of Muses was produced by Jennifer Garrity for Paris Underground Radio.